uh, to this uh, fourth uh, series session on blockchain training. So till now, what we have done, we have covered the part that uh, in the first session we discussed uh, what we are going to discuss. That was a more of an orientation session. The second session we started uh, started discussing about what is solidity, what are the basic structures of solidity. What did we learn in solidity? We learned that the structure of solidity language, or before going to the structure, we learned that uh, solidity is a language that allows us to write programs and develop applications in a blockchain called Ethereum. And why do we want to create applications in Ethereum? Primarily because we want to solve certain problems. So we know that blockchain as a technology can solve a lot of problems. Uh, in a more detailed manner than any traditional technology can solve. For example, traditional technologies include centralized solutions, include cloud solutions, include peer-to-peer -peer solutions. So blockchain, of course, is a technology which cannot be applicable everywhere, but somewhere it can perform a bit better uh, than other technologies. And uh, when, when we are solving certain problems with blockchain technology, we want some tools which allows us to uh, explore this technology or in a very negative word, but the correct word would be to utilize this technology in order to solve those problems. For that, there are various platforms. One of the platforms is Ethereum, and we are using Ethereum to develop our decentralized applications. And those applications will be used for solving the problem. So the entire structure is when we are understanding blockchain technology, our major focus is whether we are learning theory or we are learning practice. Our idea is how can we solve different problems. These problems can be various ones uh, in, in healthcare sector, in supply chain, in finance, and so on and so forth. Maybe tomorrow evening we may dedicate the entire session upon what problems a blockchain can solve. But considering the fact that we are talking to a dumb machine, in the dumb machine, whether it is a blockchain set of a backend where it is a combination of a lot of machines and internally they have their own consensus mechanism, but it's more or less they don't have their own brain. So we need to talk to them in the language they understand in, in order for them to respond and act the way we want them to act upon. So this is a language basically, like we are talking in English. Uh, the Ethereum language uh, talks in Solidity. The Ethereum is a blockchain network which talks in Solidity language. Now, when we are comparing English to Solidity, in English, we have a word uh, which are formed from letters and the combination of words in a certain order makes a meaning for you. Similarly, in, in solidity, we have combination of the structure and when they are put in a certain order, they form a certain meaning for us. And what are the structures? The structure is that in the initial part, we write pragma solidity. So here, if you can see that, a, a detailed structure, we can see that. The first line we write that, uh, yes, this is the language. Uh, we are using solidity and this is the version which we are using. It, it makes some meaning for us that we are using the compiler, which is higher than 8.4 uh, till 8.9 and something like that we can use. Uh, the contracts are written. Contracts are nothing but if you are exposed to C programming language in which we are writing again programs, let us in a very loose manner try to generalize this up and we can think of it the programs are the contracts here in which again there is a certain logic which can be executed and if you are if you are familiar with java type of a language it's even more uh, even more familiar for you like in that particular language we have certain variables the variables can be of unsigned integer types the variables can be of address type mind you the address data type in in solidity takes up uh, 160 bits and uh, that is the the number of uh, I know why are we talking about different data types? Different data types allow us to store certain uh, data. What is the domain and range we know of the data that can be stored? We know when we are performing any operation on these data types, we can expect the certain output. Consider that we are adding uh, adding the strings, let's say Amit and Yash. So Amit plus Yash, what, what does it mean in any programming language? It may be meaning a different thing in uh, in Java, it will be meaning a different thing in Python, it will be meaning a different thing in C language. Maybe some languages it may give Amit Yash as a as a as a string. In some language it may give an error as well. So these things we should be a bit aware of when we're talking about a data type.
So uh, that was uh, the major idea behind using uh, this set of data types. In any programming language, the data types mean that that what set of domains we can have, and secondly, what set of uh, operations we can perform on, and we can expect the results. So we are, so this is one of the structures that we are using. The other part uh, has a different way, like strings, unsigned integers, either of eight bits, two hundred bits, six bits. And there is another structure which is a mapping, which we saw in last or last or last lecture, which means that we have an associative array. Uh, in Python, we have some sort of a dictionary where from key to value mapping pair, where the left side of keys can be of addresses, on the right side, we can have unsigned integer of 56 bits. So we can have a mapping from on the left hand side, there are a lot of keys uh, of addresses, which can vary from zero to a lot of many. And the right hand side, they are mapped. To certain values, and this is a data type which which we are using here. Very famous data type, very commonly used in this uh, programming platform. Next, we have functions here. In the functions, just like a normal function, they have they have the way in which we can encapsulate a, uh, encapsulate something, and we can expose only a limited set of things from outside world. So outside world can use this function, which is named as transfer, and can just pass to and value. And then can expect some things to be done uh, by this particular function as well. Normal function in a programming language. And this is a constructor as well that we are using. And the constructor is a natural constructor. Whenever uh, the new, uh, the newer, or whenever uh, this contract is executed, the first step that is executed is the constructor. Or whenever an instance is created for this particular token, newer instance is created, the constructor is executed. So that was something uh, we have done till now to get a quick overview and brush up a bit faster one, but I suppose uh, uh, you have followed me. Any question, any doubt that you want to ask, even if you are joining for the first time, you are more than welcome to ask uh, any question. Feel free that it is uh, something you value your time and make sure that you are getting understanding. What we are following in this particular series of session is, we will be executing as and when we are going. So you can use remix.ethereum.org. So that while we are practicing, uh, you can execute side by side at your browser. Um, that uh, that would happen. We are executing. Any, any doubts you have or any questions you want to ask till this point of time? Anything you want to uh, ask? Or are we good to go? So we are good to go. Thank you. Uh, so you can also speak in between if. If you uh, if you, uh, the need for it, okay. Next uh, is that uh, the major thing that we are doing here is we are creating our own cryptocurrency, and we have seen that uh, in cryptocurrency we are using uh, a standard to create cryptocurrency. And what is the standard name? We are using uh, what standard we are using here? ERC twenty. So we are using ERC20 standard to create uh, tokens, and when we are creating, we should be knowing that what we are uh, and how we are learning here. So basically, we wanted to create cryptocurrency, and now I want to know what is the standard uh, that we are using. Somehow or other, I knew that ERC20 is the standard. Even though if you don't know that, we can just type of standard that is used to create cryptocurrency. So now it may pop up that yes, ERC20 is a token that we want to create. Now let us go to the standard ERC20. Um, so this this would allow us uh, to understand what is ERC20 standard and what does it mean uh, when we are creating this particular. We are going to the first page ERC20 token standard, and in this particular standard, we see that the uh, cryptocurrency means something. That means all the currencies, all the coins are same. So similar to a share that we may be having. Only thing that we need to have is a few accounts, smart contracts, and the following is a token standard. In that standard, we need to create the function name. That means the name of the token that we want to create. We need to have a symbol. We need to have a set of decimals. We need to have a total supply and the balance of and transfer and transfer from. Some of the functions we have already created. For example, we have created uh, the name, sorry, the name of the coin that we are creating. We are creating Bitcoin. 
the symbol of the coin is bits, that is decimals are 18. Just to be pointed, decimals are the numbers. Till the point uh, we will be using that. For example, when we are talking about rupee, when we are having 100 rupees, that means we are having um, 100 into 10 raised to two pesa. So the decimals we are using in rupee is 2. Uh, hypothetically speaking, if that is the normal that we are accepting. So when we are talking about, we are talking about dealing in pesa now. So give me, let's say, 5000 pesa. That means we are having 5000 divided by 100. The person will be giving 50 rupees. Uh, so that that would be uh, the denomination we are using. So when when it, when we are talking about total supply, let's say we are having a total supply of uh, one million uh, or ten million. So we won't be creating total supply of ten million bits coin. We have to create ten million into ten raised to the power eighteen as a total supply, considering uh, the analogy that we are actually creating the pesos. That means the rupee has a denomination of two. Here we have denomination till uh, decimal still eighteen. So that's why we are creating. 1 million or 10 million, whatever we are creating into 10 is about 18 as a total supply of coins that we are having. Coming back to the standard, we also need to, once we have all these things, we need to have some way in which we can tell about if somebody is uh, having an address, how many coins that address is holding. So we have uh, some sort of an address to the value mapping. That means if I am giving an address, how much coins that address is holding, fix coins here. And uh, what else? We want to have a function that writes transfer. So that means I can also transfer something to let's say Swati's account. So I will give the address to which I want to transfer. I will give the amount of bits coins that I want to transfer or any cryptocurrency that, that I want to create. And in, in return, that will only tell us that yes, is the is the transfer success or failure. Now you may be wondering, oh come on, uh, from which address I am transferring? Of course, the smart contract is run from whichever address, from that address to uh, the other address that we are supplying and how many coins we are transferring that also should be provided. And suppose I am a very magnanimous hearted person, I want to transfer five bitcoins or bits coins to Swati and Swati will be very happy that I will be receiving five bits coins from Amit's account. But now hold behold, I am having a magnanimous heart, but I am poor in my finance, I don't have even five bitcoins to give it to Swati. So at that point of time, the contract should not execute and it should result in error. So first thing it must check that the balance in my account is greater than or equal to five. So here, whatever the address that is executing the smart contract is a given standard function that is msg.sender that will tell us that uh, this is the account which is executing the smart contract. So to check the balance uh, that it should be greater than five. And then after that point of time, I should dedicate, uh, I should deduct the balance, uh, I should deduct the amount transferred from my account, increase the amount to Swati's account or to whoever I am sending, and then return to. So this is something uh, we need to execute as part of uh, this particular uh, creating this cryptocurrency that we are creating here. So we have executed the first six uh, functions and we will write now today, we will today write the last three functions here which will help us uh, to create our own cryptocurrency. And there are a couple of events that we'll also create. Right? Okay, now uh, any questions you have? So almost I have had a very brush up of the things that we have covered in last session. Anything you want to ask? Uh, yes, Swati. No. <laughs> yeah, are you good to go or is it fine? Yes, sir. everything's fine. Okay, thank you so much. I hope by that time I am revising, you have already set up your remix.ethereum.org and till now you had this smart contract with you. And if you don't have this smart contract uh, as such data, I am sharing this in the chat box. After this particular session, I will upload that into the drive that will be shared with you so that you have this contract as well. Okay. Let us start looking at what else do we require. We all also want to execute transfer from. Understand what is the purpose of transfer from. So transfer from is an address that allows us, uh, allows anyone to transfer from somebody else account to somebody else account. Now, now understand that. Now this is this is something different from what we understand. So here we are saying that understand in the UPI terminology or understand the internet banking terminology that we currently are aware of. We are saying that I have the power to transfer some smart contracts from Swati's account to Yash account. 
oh my god this is this is too much for me to digest now if suppose i have an icici bank account hypothetically speaking all of us have that account in icici bank so your bank account is different yes bank account is my is different now i have the power to transfer some actual currency from yes account to swati's account now this, this is this is this is way too much for me to digest for anyone to digest and why would anyone allow it to happen in cryptocurrency see when we are discussing here it is fine that we will understand that this is happening but for me it is very important that if erc20 contract is at this particular place why it is at this particular place if it is what was the history for it what made it to be a standard at this particular place? what was the thinking behind the standard makers that they allowed this particular thing what was the loopholes in the existing uh, financial system because of which this system was allowed of course somebody has to approve it up or yes has to approve it up that i can i can transfer from his account to anyone else's account okay that's fine we have another function for which i can approve or yes can approve me that's fine but why is it at all it's existing at this particular place to my understanding i should be only allowed to transfer something from my account why would yash allow me to transfer from his account or from his account to me that means i can transfer something from his account now to get to the answer first of all we need to be comfortable with uh, with the fact that something is something is uh, confusing for us so what is your thought process what do you see that why it was in this particular place why did anyone allow that see this is a provisioning that when we are creating bitcoin i am creating a provisioning where i can transfer from yes account to anyone else account after of course yes will approve me to transfer why it was there can you give a thought process i am perfectly fine that the thought process is wrong and it must be wrong as well understand that but what is your thinking can you tell us sir it might be for the crypto exchanges so that any other user could means get a chance to it could help on board more people great now you are talking about from the application point of view to justify how the theory came into picture so yes cryptocurrencies have exploited it up have used it this for various goods that today if i want to transact from coin bcx or from wazirx or from binance any particular crypto exchange i will just tell uh, that particular exchange hey okay, buddy please uh, take it uh, that i have transferred and when you are transferring something i give you the power of attorney uh, if we talk about in that legal term do it on my behalf okay now it's great that you are understanding the application for it but understand that application for cryptocurrency came later on cryptocurrency came later on this standard became uh, the standard first of all why at all was a standard first of course it may be possible that the senate makers might have thought that in future there must be crypto exchanges that may allow it up to do that it may be possible but was there some problem in the existing financial system because of which that provisioning was allowed and yes one of the applications came on to be crypto exchange huh? uh, anyone would like to say please swati you want to give it a try it's okay to be wrong believe me it's fine that when you are saying something wrong and when the answer is presented to you you may have a better clarity sir uh, yes, yes, please come on this concept just hit my mind i may be wrong here but i think there is something decentralized here so if i am transferring the crypto exchanges basically i can use someone else's server to transfer it to that means to another person so i think that might be something if i am able to explain it yeah if i understand your terminology so now in the existing system what happens icici bank is a central player and now blockchain technology came into power with the fact that we are making it decentralized now just understanding from whatever yes she is saying that currently in the centralized system uh, in 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 the finance system we have icici a bank or any banking system for that matter sbi or hdfc whatever that may be so now that controls all the transaction from that particular uh, agency's point that this agency that bank controls from that server to whatever that can go so even if i want to transfer something to let's say yes account 
ICICI bank always comes into picture first of all. That first of all, I have to tell ICICI bank whom to transfer, what to transfer, and always that is the the situation that is a central player that is the key player in this picture. I cannot on my own transfer something to Yash without any centralized player. Fine. This is one thing now. Yash is stating in the decentralized scenario the problem why cryptocurrencies came into picture to remove centralization. Yash is saying that if I understood you clearly, correct me as well, that now from the different servers I can transfer from some other server to some other server. I think that was your idea that you were saying here. Yes, sir. Similar that was what I was saying. Yeah. So let us not talk into server into picture as well. Servers are just basically the bots that can act upon from my uh, my direction. Servers are something a place where we are storing. Servers are place where some computation may be executing. Servers are place that are the that are just like robots that act on my behalf. So it may be that the control, the server may be in, in the terminology which Yashi is saying, maybe ICAC, uh, the server may be HDFC, server may be me, server may be Yash, the server may be Swati, whatever the terminology that you are considering. Uh, it now considering back our discussion to the point where we were discussing that the currency that we are creating or economy that we are creating is decentralized. I don't want myself and i'm transferring to go through from a central player that's it that was the idea idea is that on my own i can transfer to yash and now it's okay to be a bit confused right now that i am not giving you the answer live with the confusion and when you know that there is an answer to this confusion whom to approach when your answer is there you find it on your own Believe me, it is more of a liberating type of a feeling that you on your own search something, on your own you got to the answer. In this particular session, I am not giving you this answer. Go to Google, go to whatever sources you want to approach, find out this particular answer. I, I have seeded you some extent here. I have seeded you to some answer that yes, we are creating an economy away from centralized solutions, decentralized solutions. And the standard is there, but transfer form is there. Is it okay, yes? Yeah? To um, be okay with this uncomfortable situation, I'm not having the answer right now. Yes, sir. I'll try searching on my own and then in the next session, I'll answer. Yeah, it's a different level of learning that you will have, I'm sure. Uh, and fine, it is that even if you don't get the answer, maybe you might not be able to speak tonight. If you don't get the answer, it's okay. Tomorrow, I shall discuss it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me this freedom to uh, continue now further, even understanding that I have not answered this previous point. Okay. But I commit that by tomorrow you will get the answer. <laughs> Either by yourself or I will give the answer more. Okay. Now we understand that uh, we have a function which is saying transfer from that gives out to from which address to which address and how much coin uh, Bitcoin I want to transfer. And of course, it returns success or failure. And there is an approval that I am approving to whom to transfer how much account, how much currency. I may be having 100 uh, bits coins, but I am approving Yash to transfer, let's say, 50 coins from my account. That is something approved says. And the allowance is a function that's uh, that's okay that I am allowing uh, someone to spend on my behalf, and this is this, and this is amount remaining. I will get to it. This allowance function, what does it do? But basically, uh, I think this is uh, this. I will get to it. What allowance is? So I think it means that if I am the owner, and uh, this will tell that. Uh, to whom I have allowed to spend how much. I think this is the this is the returning part is important here. In the return, I am I am returning how much is remaining uh, from 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 my part. That uh, so I am the owner. I am giving the address of the spender. So suppose I am allowing uh, um, let's say both Yash and Swati to spend let's say twenty twenty bits coins from my account. And uh, so this will 
ask me that let's say I am the owner and Yash is the spender, and this will allow me to maybe something return that how much uh, cryptocurrencies is remaining uh, from my account that Yash can spend uh, as well. So still, I have just allowed Yash to spend twenty coins on my behalf, and how much Yash has spent or not. This will allow me that how much coins still yet can spend uh, on my. I think this is this is uh, the 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 function that will return me that. I may be wrong as well, but let us go further. And when we are developing it up, we may get a decent understanding. And now we are seeing some events, and these are the events uh, uh, which which are just uh, declaration. If you have heard the declaration. Here, this is the syntax for it, or this is just declaration. Of course, above is also declaration. But when we are defining these, uh, defining these uh, events, or others, when we are emitting these events, when we are saying that uh, this will write up something in the log files that yes, something has transferred, somebody has approved to something. So this is just something which will be there on the logs for everyone to see and take an action upon that. Right? Okay, enough of that. Let us get back to some action. There we will uh, get our hands uh, a bit cleaner, if not dirtier, because when we are doing something, we may be doing something and realizing something more. Okay, so when we are writing something, what what uh, what function we are creating? Can you tell something? What function we are creating now? We have created transfer function, and uh, what else function can we create? Come on, uh, now I I need some energy from your side. This should be. So we can create transfer from. Yes, we can create transfer from, and we can create approve from. Both of them uh, will go side by side. Hypothetically speaking, we have created a function transfer from. Then we are creating transfer from function. What do we require? We need to require that an address from, an address to, and how much value. And hypothetically speaking, when we execute that function, what we what should happen? The the balance of the from account should be deducted by that much value, and the balance of to account should be increased by that much value. Am I right there? Yes, sir. And for that to happen, the basic criteria is the balance of the from account should have that much value. That's it. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Uh, now you may be wondering. Uh, okay, let us start right now. Transfer from. So this is the Ethereum tab, and I'm just copying the transfer from functions definition here. Uh, from this tab, I am copying it up, and I am just pasting directly here, so that uh, there is no ambiguity. So now we have created. Now uh, we are writing this up. What do we require? We require that require that uh, this balances whatever we're using here uh, balances. And underscore from this is what we need to check it up should be greater than or equal to underscore value. Fine, that's it. And what else we require? We need to just make sure that uh, balances and once that is correct, underscore from is equal to just copy it up. Minus, sorry, minus underscore, and now balances underscore two is equal to. If you complete it up, what should happen here? I don't know what should happen. Anyone can help me? What should I write to complete it up? Can anyone help? How should I complete it up now? Uh, plus value. So I just need to write that. And what else? I need to return. Is that so simple? I'm afraid that is. It is so simple. So um, you need to accept that it is so simple. That's okay. What else do we need to create? Uh, that is created. We need to create an approve function. And what should happen in the approve function? 
I'm approving someone that they can transfer on my behalf, isn't it? And once somebody is approving, uh, what should I do? So could you repeat? Okay, I am just saying that when someone is approving, when this function is executed, then what should happen? Then the person should be able to get the access to our account to transfer the money. Great, absolutely. And um, what should happen internally? What should happen internally? Uh, for that to happen, actually, I need to create another mapping uh, that tell that. See, I am a person, let's suppose, let's take an example of an exchange. Which exchange you are aware of? Crypto exchange. Yeah, any exchange. Coin DCX. Let's say Coin DCX. Now, in this particular, I am allowing Coin DCX that can be Binance, Wazirx, anything. For, for example, I'm using Coin DCX. So I am allowing Coin DCX there to spend on my behalf. Fine. In the other case, I may be allowing Wazirx to spend on my behalf. I am allowing Binance to spend on my behalf. And that may be other 20 different things I will be allowing on my behalf. So when I am, actually I should be able to see that Amit Dua, one address, has allowed Coin DCX to spend how much? Are you making any sense? Yes, sir. Amit Dua has allowed Wazirx to spend how much? Understand, Amitua is an account, Wazirx is also an account, and the number is just how much he has allowed. Fine? Yes, sir. Now, I need to create another mapping for this to understand that right now we have already one mapping that talks about that, yes, this is a person and what is the balance. But now I need to create another mapping, and that mapping should be. Uh, from an address to an address, how much is allowed? Let's understand there is a mapping from an address to another address. How much it is allowed to create? Uh, Allow me, I am sure that you are super genius here and you might have understood whatever I am speaking, but something for my clarity that uh, this is an address and there are three different addresses. One of them is, uh, let's say, Coin DCX, other is Wazirx, other is Binance. Now, on these addresses, Amit Dua has allowed how much for Wazirx? Amit Dua has allowed how much on Coin DX? Amit Dua has allowed how much on Binance, and this is the mapping that will give me that. Right? So, to get some more clarity, this is uh, a, a key which talks about addresses, and one of the addresses is Amidua's address. Until now, there was a mapping which talks about the Amidua's address, how much balance is there. So far, so good. Yes, sir. Great. Thank you so much. Now I am creating another mapping in which there are different addresses and there is an address again for Amit Dua. But now there are three different or many different addresses that may be there. And I am mapping to one of the addresses here. Let's say this is Coin DCX, which will tell me how much I have allowed, uh, uh, how much Amit Dua has allowed Coin DCX to spend. It may be possible that Amidu has allowed Binance to spend something different, or it again can be a different thing. Right? So this is what we are uh, creating here. I hope you might have got some bit of clarity here, what we are creating. Mm, yes, sir. Right? So this is allowance. Now, when we are creating a law function, a law function should update this mapping that if I'm allowing coin DCX to spend on me, that should update in this particular mapping that Amitua has allowed uh, coin DCX to spend this money. Initially, it may be zero. Now, it may be 
let's say if I allow five, the memory is five now. Fine. So I need to update this mapping when I am when I am using this allowance or or, uh, or this function uh, approve function. See, this, I am not very sure of how should I speak it up, but uh, it may be possible that I am forcing too much. But if your faces speak a lot of it, if I am understanding, maybe you can switch on your webcam uh, if possible, so that I need not ask every time understanding. You know, your nod will be clear and everything will make some sense. Otherwise, your level of yes and level of no will tell me that how much. I need to explain once again. So, are you understanding this somewhat? Yes, sir. Sure. Let me on switch on my webcam. Thank you so much. Am I visible? Oh, yes. Yes. Your face is bright and clear. Thank you so much for allowing me to enter into your room and see uh, where you are. Thank you. Okay. Now, this is a function that we are creating a proof, and this approve function, I need to make sure that uh, I am doing. Uh, I mean, this approval or this allowance is updated, right? And what else do I need to do? I can also write it up uh, on this approval event on the log file that uh, somebody has allowed somebody to do something. That owner, Amit Do, has allowed, let's say, point DCX to spend this much value. This is written on the log file as well, right? Let us try to uh, write it up here that uh, when we are when we are creating this approve function, this approve function, what it should do? Number one, it should check that actually I should have this much coins, number one, uh, whatever value. Number two, it should update this mapping, uh, whatever mapping we have created. Let's say the name is right now Alliance. And number three, it can emit that particular, uh, emit that particular event. Emit means writing it up in the log files. Very simple, nothing very complicated, and you can do it if you know the particular algorithm. That's it. Right? Let us try to do that now. And just before emitting that event, I need to also give up, uh, give this uh, particular declaration. That yes, I may be using something uh, while I'm emitting that. Right? So this may, this may be putting it up here. Okay. Now uh, I am creating this particular. Uh, particular function. So I should check that uh, that uh, I am having uh, this much amount of balance as well. I means who? Uh, I means the, the person who is executing this smart contract. So uh, I am checking. So this is something, if you answer this up, I will be so very happy, so very happy. Which address you derive here? So the first address has to be of the owner itself. And uh, how do I find out the owner here? Uh, message it. dot sender. So, uh, I can I can give you some sweets and gulab jamun something like that because you have uh, understood a lot. Because message was sent to the person who is executing the smart contract. Right? Thank you so much for being live on LID. So I will just uh, type the message to sender. If this is the contract who should have uh, more than value. That's it. Uh, nothing very complicated uh, should be having greater than or equal to uh, the value. That's it. This is the first thing. And what does require do? Require says that suppose if the owner is not having that much uh, coins, the rest of the things will not execute. It will just terminate this 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 uh, function with with an exception. And we will go uh, more deeper into that. And what else should I do? I should update the mapping. And what is the mapping called here? This mapping is, let's say, called alliance mapping. Now, this will require something. And I, ideally, I should have wanted you to exercise your muscle as well here. But allow me that if I'm doing correctly, you can uh, you can do it up. So I want that alliance. This is a mapping. Now, here, how do I update the mapping? Understand that I have updated. Where I have updated any previous mapping? I have updated this mapping. Fine. Now, how did I? How can I update this mapping? First of all, I need to update the mapping that message dot sender. First of all, sorry, not underscore here. Message dot sender. This is a mapping which is the mapping which talks about this. This is me. Understood? 
now i need to talk to the mapping which is uh, of coin dcx isn't it yes sir are you are you clear for it now be aware of it the fact that i may do a jhola jhala here that uh, yeah. your concepts will be tested a bit further right be aware be clear that what i am doing you are uh, you are exercising your uh, brain power as well now here what should explanation spend underscore spender and what should i do is equal to whatever it was previously whatever it was previously i will update it up with underscore value fine now is it correct how do you know is it correct or not look at this particular diagram and then tell me that my thought process is that i am the sender i am allowing the message uh, allowing the owner uh, so i am the owner i am allowing the coin dc to spend on my behalf so mapping says that this is i i look go back to this mapping where the mapping is address i am giving go to another mapping and in that another mapping what do you will find you will find another address go to that address and now update that with uh, whatever value you have to plus something fine are you all agreeing with whatever i have done is is actually i wanted to do is correct here sir i have a bit of problem understanding line 36 here yes. sir in the previous cases we uh, like in line number 19 here so we used to subtract the value there but here we are trying to add the value here okay so why we are trying to add because like suppose amit dua is allowing coin dc to spend on his behalf it may be possible that amit dua has already allowed previously to spend something on his behalf so if amit dua has allowed let's say coin dc to spend 5 bits coin previously now i'm allowing 5 more to spend so here i am saying that approve i am amit dua is sending approve coin dc to spend 5 coins on my behalf previously you may have allowed five more so what should happen now what is the current uh, standing that when i am giving amit dua's address and in this particular allowance mapping i am giving coin dc x address it will give me 10 so previously it was five whatever it was previously add whatever i am allowing more to spend that is what the thing is there you got it yes i got it now okay great is it is it fine swati you understand yes sir yes sir yes. great thank you so much now what else should i do i can emit that event as well uh, i am emitting the event which event i am emitting i am emitting this event uh, approval event if somebody has approved something approval event i am emitting and what i am emitting here see when i am emitting here i need to be emitting that who has approved to whom has it approved and how much has he approved and is it something uh, rocket science here Who has approved? Come on, message sender. sender. And uh, who to whom Spender. has he approved? Sender. Sender. And how much he has approved? Value. And what else should I do? I should return. This is just four lines code. Is it too simple? You know it. It is. If you don't know it, you keep on doing everything. You will not. Uh, basically, it's the logic. If you know the logic, that is the beauty of computer programming. That if I have to tell, let's say, yes, yes, uh, bring me a water, glass of water. Now, yes, there's too many ambiguities here. Which glass? First of all, I mean, just this glass, this glass, this glass, and water means from where should I bring water? From tap water, from distilled water, or from whatever water how much water should i fill in the glass should i bring it now or should i bring it later should i bring it in a tray should i bring it to you in a water bottle there are so many ambiguities while i am talking to any person like computer i tell it clearly that now please mr computer let's say here in this particular uh, program in like ethereum please uh, do this for me and i specifically very very clear that right now please go and in the glass bring me a tap water something like that so that makes it super clear for everyone that is how 
uh, I am a big fan of everyone should understand, uh, learn at least some point of time programming. That will make their thought process very, very clear. That if I have to tell anyone, understand their as dumb as computer. And now tell it in a sequential manner. In a sequential manner. First, do this check if I have uh, this much value. Then you should uh, increase the value something. Then you should do that. Then you should do that. This makes it super clear in your mind as well. And when you are telling to someone, other person is so comfortable as well. That is, communication is clear. Right? Got it? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Now, uh, what else do I need to do? I mean, considering the fact that we have created uh, approve as well, now that thing we need to do is uh, alliance uh, function that we derive. And uh, what is alliance function? Alliance is basically we have already done it. We didn't know that we have done it. Have we? We have done alliance already. Now, majak majak me, I mean, in just fun, we already created them. What does alliance had to do actually? Alliance just had to tell. I mean, if you understand that thing, what does alliance had to tell? Alliance had to tell that who is the owner, who is the spender. And it should return that how much the spender can spend on my behalf, how much I have allowed that. Already done it. Fine. What else? Sir, you yes, yes, please. Sir, sir, this allowance function, this remaining, what is this remaining amount? I didn't wow. get it. Sir. I'm, what is it returning? I'm a big fan of yours. So basically, big fan here because you have caught me, yes. I tried to dodge this thing, but you have caught it. So remaining means how much coins that uh, coin DCX has spent on my behalf. How much they can spend. Suppose initially I have allowed coin DCX to spend 50 coins on my behalf. And now I'm allowing 10 more to spend on my behalf. So remaining will tell me how much coin DCX now can spend. And now we'll be wondering that uh, now it is 60 should be. No, it is not 60. It should be possible that I have allowed coin DCX to spend 50 on my behalf. They have already spent 25. Now, in the approval thing, what is spending now is not 50. It is just 25. And then 25 plus 35 is the final value that it is returned by that. So, alliance function, by default, when it is updated, it will just update to the value value, what was previously there, add 10 now. And that means coin has spent 35 now on my behalf. So, how much remaining that uh, thing coin has spent on my behalf? So, that is the remaining thing that coin is spent. And if you see clearly here in this particular thing, it is that thing alliance here. And where we are updating it up, we are updating just here. That's it. Whatever previously was there, we are just updating that. It may be 50 versus 25, that person has already spent it, coin is has spent it. So that is it is. Thank you so much for asking this question. Is it clear a bit, Swati? Not completely, little bit. Yes. Sir. Yes. Why it is not clear? Because of the fact that we coin DCX has spent to karna sikhaya ni apne coin DCX kaha se react karega. Because we haven't created this function transfer from. So when we are creating transfer from function, that time we are again updating that up. That now coin DCX is spending on my behalf. That time 50 coin DCX was allowed to spend. 20 he has spent when he is doing transfer from on my behalf giving to somebody else. That time this this uh, mapping will also update. It will be 50 minus 25, sub 25 will be. And then after that, I will update 10. So the remaining would be 35. Only. So this alliance function will again be updated when point is spent on my behalf. That is 25 will be remaining. And then whenever I am asking what is the remaining, it will give me whatever the point is is allowed to spend on my behalf. Make sense? Thank you so much. Wow. Is it fine, Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay. Now let us go ahead and write it up, this function. We have still seven minutes and I'm sure that uh, seeing your progress, uh, you don't need seven minutes as well. Fine. Okay. Now what should happen here? <laughs> now, uh, please, uh, you may be wrong as well. Just think for it what should happen here. What should happen? Speak it. What should happen? Okay. Where I am? I, I got lost. So when I'm doing transfer from, from someone to someone this much, what should happen now? Yeah. The point we say is spending from your account giving to Swati. What should happen now? 
what should happen to yes account what should happen to swati's account sir so balance should be deducted from my account the value amount okay what else apart from balance what else should update great that balances should update what else and the existing amount that is present in my account should get updated that is balance is itself what else should update uh, the approval yes the allowance it is in front of you of course isn't it so coin d6 was previously allowed to spend uh, 50 25 spend kar diye matlab 25 he has spent so mera balance to obviously deduct hoga suppose i have 100 uh, i will share here now again suppose i have 100 here total this this address has 100 and it has allowed uh, 50 to be spent by coin dcx coin dcx and 25 already spent kar diye so of course mera account mein to 75 ho jayega but this approval should also be updated now ye bhi 25 ho jayega hai na isn't it and it is very very simple okay so although i should have asked you to write up here but seeing you already have one task for you to do it today why this is what it is but i will just say that number one uh, this this value should update and number two only this value should update and number three this a uh, function should be triggered off that's it and what it should happen let us write it up okay first of all uh, i should say require this is executed require means that the from uh, sorry balances are you able to see when i am writing yes sir balances of from should be uh, greater than or equal to what quickly tell me right and next next i should update the value of uh, balances my balances is updated for whom for from uh That is there uh, is equal to what should happen is equal to balances underscore uh, from minus value okay underscore values. What else? It should happen that balances of two. Okay, fabulous. What else should happen? Approval is also updated. Alliance, basically. So, alliance. How will I update alliance? Alliance of from and. So this you may take some time to digest, or you may question me, or you may challenge me as well. Now, please, uh, this may take some. If somebody has understood it up, I may. I mean, I I would be willing to just right now order a piece of chocolate to you. Do you understand what is it? Line number forty-six. If anyone can even just try to explain it, Abhinav, I will be so very happy. What is line number forty-six? See, line number forty-three is okay. Mere pas account hona chahiye. That's fine. And forty-five is I deduct from my account, add it to uh, the person whom I am transferring. Underscore it. Now, what is forty-six? So forty-six is updating in that coin DCX the amount that has been transferred. Okay. Now, can you translate that how it is updating? Line. Can you explain what is happening? Line number forty-six. So, can I explain line from line number forty-three? No. That I only want line number forty-six. What is happening? Only line number forty-six. Okay. Allow me. Who is message dot sender here? It's coin DCX. 
and who is from from is amit dua now can you think of it coin dcx is right now executing this contract and it is transferring from amit dua's account something to swati's account so now mera account mein kaam ho gaya line number 44 okay swati's account is added added line number 45 okay what else should happen ki the approval or allowance from my account to coin dcx account is deducted so who is from amit because amit has already allowed coin dcx to spend something and right now coin dcx is executing this contract so coin dcx so basically what should allowance happen from my account to coin dcx account the allowance should also reduce so this is line number 46 confusion even better even better if you are confused i am saying that nothing has to do just understand that you are in a world of a breakthrough if you are confused understand that you are in a world of breakthrough fine time is over but last point i would want you to speak it up first of all what you understood in this contract 41 one one each of you speak and uh, then uh, we will find out the session first what what do you understand in this particular contract 41 so the balance so is deducted from standard mm. and the value is added to the person uh, uh, okay so this line 46 i'm confused a little won't it get updated automatically or we have to write the code i'm i don't know Okay. Thank you so much. What else is your sure understanding is? Sir, I understood that we are basically after getting the approval, we are transferring from my account that Coin DCS has to the account that it was supposed to transfer to. So Coin DCS has now become the sender, and the uh, and the amount is getting transferred. Oh, now I understood what the confusion is. So basically, when I'm approving something, understand that at the time of approval, nothing goes to Coin DCX account. अभी सिर्फ कागजों में खेल खेल हो रहा है यहाँ पे. Everything is on paper. आ मेरे अकाउंट से कुछ डिलीट नहीं हुआ अप्रूवल के टाइम पे. I did not. It's all on the paper that I am allowing Coin DCX to spend on my account. Still, money is there in my account. Coin DCX has got only the power of attorney to transfer. And when actually this transfer function is happening. That point of time, Coin DCX is executing the contract to transfer from Amit Dua's account to Swati's account, and that point of time, the actual deduction is happening and actual addition is happening to Swati's account, and the power of attorney is also changing. So I'm talking in terms of power of attorney, but I, because I know Swati as a relative <laughs> who is in who is in uh, law field, so power of attorney means somebody I have given the authority to do something on my behalf. So now that is uh, the time where the allowance function should also update. ठीक है मेरे अकाउंट से डिडक्ट हो गया इट हैज बीन डिडक्टेड फ्रॉम माय अकाउंट आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड इन द एज समवट फाइन सो इट हैज बीन डिडक्टेड फ्रॉम माय अकाउंट एडिट टू फॉर दिस अकाउंट फाइन बट नाउ देयर इज अनदर मैपिंग दैट इज हाउ मच आई हैव अलाउड टू पॉइंट ECX दैट आल्सो शुड अपडेट सी इनिशियली आई हैव अलाउड 50 नाउ 25 हैज बीन डेबिटेड From my account, edit to Swati's account, and who has debited? Coin DCX has deducted from my account. So I should also update that Coin DCX should only uh, be allowed after this point of time to deduct twenty five from my account, isn't it? So that is what is happening. The smart contract or the function that is transferred from is executed right now by Coin DCX. So message or sender is Coin DCX now. So the mapping is from Amit. so if you understand this particular terminology here this contract is executed by this particular person here right so mapping should execute that from and this is message dot sender to that particular mapping it should update so this is from a message sender is coin dcx uski uh, allowance jo hai that i am reducing it up. okay somewhat So basically, in line forty-six, we are means uh, 
basically reducing the amount of approval that now coin dcx has absolutely bang on bang on yes it's because yeah. this is coin dcx is executing this function not me not swati 